大家好 ，I'm Nathan Rich, aka 火锅大王。You know, I thought it was going to be smooth sailing from here on in. My next video is already done, and it's just about a movie that I like. I was going to go on vacation in my mind, you know, hang out on an imaginary island for the next couple of days. But alas, a vibrant politician, Denise Ho of Hong Kong, has got me all worried again. All right, Ho, let's break this down. For those of you who don't know, Denise Ho is a Hong Kong Canadian former celebrity who's once again in the spotlight. Originally, she got popular for her music career, but faded out of relevance a few years back. Now, Ho is dabbling in politics, and she's getting a lot of attention today. She, of all people, was chosen to speak at the UN Commission for Human Rights in Geneva. It's been all over the news today. I saw it here. CNN: China interrupts Hong Kong pop star during UN speech. Already, this is a little weird. So the news is that China objected to what she was saying and not what she was saying. Well, I guess whatever she was saying must have been totally uncontroversial and completely undebatable. The only story here is that anyone interrupted her at all. All right. Well, let's see what it says. China's delegation interrupted Ho's speech twice by raising procedural motions. First, it accused Ho of violating the UN Constitution by referring to Hong Kong as a country rather than a part of China, and asked that she use the wordings that conform with UN rules. The Chinese diplomat used the second motion to accused Ho. This is CNN, right? Accused Ho of baselessly attacking the one country, two systems arrangement under which the city is governed. Ho ended her speech by asking, "Wait, wait." Aren't you going to tell us if those claims were true? I mean, you just said that China made these two claims: one, Ho is referring to Hong Kong as a country, and two, Ho attacked the one country, two systems arrangement baselessly. Are, are you even going to tell us if those are true or not, CNN? No. Okay. I, I mean, you are a news company, right? But you're still going to make me figure out if the claims are true. Really? All right. Where was I? Oh, so then the article says Ho ended her speech by asking the UN to convene an urgent session to protect the people of Hong Kong and remove China from the UN Human Rights Council. You know China is in Hong Kong, right, Ho? So you would be kicked out too. I mean, wait, aren't you with the NGO? Who are you? So then the article changes to talking about the riots, and that's it. It never even tells us what. Else, Ho said, or what her point really was, or if what China says was right. It's like they didn't have anything to say, so they just quickly made an article. Done. <laughs> Let's take a look at what she actually said. Let's do CNN's job. The Vienna Declaration guarantees democracy and human rights. Um, no, it doesn't. The Vienna Declaration is not a guarantee of anything. Read it. It's basically a long, rambling declaration to have nations work together to encourage better behavior and rights, including yes, democracy. It talks about toxic waste, rape, and all kinds of other things, good and bad. It's sort of a long-winded plaque to put on your wall. There's no guarantee in it, and just like it doesn't guarantee democracy, it also doesn't guarantee that there will be no toxic waste in the world. You know what else it doesn't guarantee? That there will be no violence or terrorism. What it does do is encourage democracy and other things, and it equally as strongly discourages acts to threaten territorial integrity, like, for example, oh, I don't know, calling Hong Kong a country in a UN convention. But maybe you didn't even say that. We're going to find out now. It equally strongly discourages terrorism. Terrorism, according to Hong Kong law, is. Quote, the use or threat of action where the use or threat is intended to compel the government. So, as equally as the Vienna Declaration guarantees democracy, it also guarantees that no one would, oh, I don't know, commit violence to compel the government. Like, for example, by smashing in windows and shutting down a legal bill by violence and force. Anyway, so a minority of the people in Hong Kong protested against their own country violently. Which is called separatism and terrorism, according to Hong Kong's legal definitions. What does this have to do with democracy? And if it is about democracy, why did protesters put a British colonial flag up? Hong Kong wasn't democratic under British rule; it was a puppet state. I just 
And it's not even that I necessarily disagree with you, Ho. It's that your side has been committing mildly violent terrorism to push the narrative. And I almost don't even want to start talking about this until my history series comes out, but you're part of a country much larger than just one city. One city wanting something does not a democratic vote make. But we'll talk about that later in the video. All right, go ahead. Last month, two million people walked in peaceful protests, fighting an extradition bill that would remove the firewall, protecting Hong Kong from interference of the Chinese government. Uh, peaceful protests? I take it you've only been watching CNN, or you're intentionally lying, and I'm not really sure which one's worse. And then you say, interference of the Chinese government. Hong Kong is in China. The way you said that is politically motivated and, some might argue, inappropriate in the United Nations. Especially since you're an ex-celebrity singer lady, not a politician. Why are you even in this meeting? Point of order, I give the floor to China. Oh, someone did argue that. This must be where that wacky Chinese guy accuses her of calling Hong Kong a country, right CNN? Let's listen. The Hong Kong Special Administrative Region is a part of the People's Republic of China. Just now, this delegate of the so-called NGO, in her speech, mentioned Hong Kong side by side with China. Wait, CNN, I thought you just told everyone that this guy told her off for calling Hong Kong a country. No, he called her out for doing exactly what she did. She mentioned them side by side as if they are hierarchically equal. They aren't. That might imply a country or it might not, depending on the context. But it almost certainly implies independence which borders on sedition, which might actually be a crime. You think people should be committing crimes in UN conventions? So far, to me, that sounds like the news. She just implied that China has no right to be involved with Hong Kong when it is, in fact, the country to which Hong Kong belongs. And you know what? The vice president agreed with China and asked her to follow the rules. That's not in this article for some reason, CNN. Maybe you didn't have enough room in your article because you put in this picture completely disproving everything Ho said. Yes, this is a picture of so-called peaceful protesters who have forced their way into a government building to commit more crimes inside. Then she goes on a long talk about various perceived injustices. I won't go through all of them, but I will say I find it puzzling to see people like her complain that dozens were arrested. Lady, bring two million people to Washington, D.C. and start throwing bricks at police officers and smashing through government building windows. Then run in and commit the same acts you guys did in Hong Kong. You will beg for only 12 people to be arrested. The U.S. would declare martial law, shut down the entire city, and have the damn army on the ground with live ammunition and air support before you can say, but democracy... I was shocked to see how restrained the Hong Kong police were. That's probably why there are pro-police counter-protests that almost nobody reported on. She makes some other pretty strong claims and implications, but I won't go through them because most of them are just emotional cries without any real evidence. That's fine, though. I mean, she can believe whatever she wants. Since the handover, we saw our autonomy slowly eroded. China is preventing our democracy at all costs. The Sino-British Joint Declaration is a binding treaty registered with the UN. Yet after only 22 years, China is denying its obligations. The one country, two systems is nearing its death. Protests are still ongoing. There is a point we'll of order. I give the floor to China. Wow, there's a whole lot there. You can watch the whole thing if you want to see all her accusations, but basically they're the same things that CNN and other anti-China outlets have been saying. So then China complains again, saying this time she has made unfounded allegations about the one country, two systems policy, and to please remind her to not use abusive speech. And the president seems to agree with that complaint as well. So why then is the story here, China interrupts Hong Kong pop star during UN speech? Shouldn't the story be, activist alleges she's a singer, then hurls accusations at China, implies Hong Kong is independent of China, and calls for China to be published based on her own accusations? Keep in mind, this is an ex-celebrity singer hurling accusations about China in the UN. That is the story, CNN. That's crazy. And you know, as I hear her say these things, she really does remind me of a younger version of me. I mean, she's a lot older than me, but still, she has that rebel spirit. 
You know, I don't want to go on endlessly about Hong Kong, but I think people would do very well to put themselves in politicians' shoes sometimes. It must be so strange to hear me say something like that if you're from another country. So let me reverse the situation for you. Imagine you live in, let's say, America, and everyone in California decides that they want a completely socialist government. No more of this capitalist-socialist combination that is America. They want full-on socialism. And they've decided that they aren't part of America anymore. They've proved this by peacefully rioting and smashing up police and government buildings. Then another country comes along and tells America to just let California go. And that country just happens to be in a trade war with America. And it's allied with California. Should you give up California? Well, I don't really know. Those kinds of advanced politics aren't what I'm experienced with, and I'm an outsider. I don't have all the behind-the-scenes facts. The example is simplistic, but, and here's the really, really important part here. Not only do I not know, I'm pretty sure Ms. Ho doesn't know either. Why would she? She used to be a singer. What does that have to do with advanced politics? Again, why is she even in this meeting? She's talking about subjects beyond her understanding with the naivety of, well, of a uh, has-been singer. Look, the thing is, I don't personally even feel passionate about the protests. If you want to smash up everything and then complain when you get arrested, well, that's up to you. I don't condemn you for it. And Ms. Ho here is definitely brave. And I'm sure she's really passionate. I admire that. But I don't think those are enough to make you a good politician. I mean, if you just step away from this and you think about the whole picture, how is the mainland supposed to integrate Hong Kong into its system completely by 2047? Wait until the very last day and then suddenly march in and take over the government? How do you think that will go if you guys can't even stop smashing buildings over the exact same kind of extradition treaty everyone everywhere else has? So, and I have no idea if this is what they're doing. If I were in charge of this whole thing, I would really be trying to integrate gradually over time. It seems like that would be the smoothest way possible. Of course, there will always be random singers and 25-year-olds who totally understand everything in the world. But the world moves on. Let's get out of politicians' way so that they can do their job, please. And like I said before, why don't you come on over to Shenzhen and just see how scary it is? We'll grab a latte at Starbucks and you can tell me all about it. Thanks, everyone. See ya.